We're here meeting with Tracy DePellegrin, Executive Director of the Genetic Society of America and Executive Editor of the journals Genetics and G3 to talk about what the Early Career Leadership Program means to participants and to GSA. Tracy, how do early career scientists fit in here? Thanks, Jessica. Students and postdocs are the future of the field. We want to understand your challenges and provide opportunities and to help in any way we can. Your success is tremendously important to the whole community, now and for years to come. Not everyone realizes this, but early career scientists typically make up around half our membership. So the GSA board made a decision a few years ago to focus on enhancing our programs for early career members. What are some of the impacts the program can have on early career scientists? The genesis of the leadership program was to give students and postdocs a more active voice, both within the GSA and which, within the scientific community. I just had a listening session with the early career scientist leaders. It was a great dialogue. We can even put into place some of the requests right away. At the same time, we wanted participants to come away with concrete benefits, no matter what your career pathway or the support you may or may not have at your institution. For example, you can build up your network, add new achievements to your CV or resume, and develop leadership and communication skills. Not everyone stays at the bench, and it's important to recognize that and to provide support for those scientists. It's competitive out there for jobs, and participating in our program will give you a real edge. We've seen this countless times as program participants transition to jobs in industry, to tenure tra track positions, postdocs, and even jobs at GSA. You can truly make a difference to GSA, to your community, and to bolstering your own corpus of knowledge and experience. You can serve on an early career scientist committee like communications, career development, or multimedia. You might conduct interviews of other scientists, help create materials for advocacy, shape the agenda of our equity and inclusion efforts, and meet with GSA board members to talk about the issues that matter most to you. How else is this engagement important to GSA? Well, what the staff and the board of directors have really loved about this program is having extensive engagement with early career members. Rather than just a handful of early career representatives on committees, we now get input from a wider range of voices, so GSA really is your society. Finally, we all know that peer-to-peer -peer support is important now more than ever. GSA connects you with others who share your struggles, share your interests, and share your excitement about your scientific discoveries. Committee members focus their efforts on helping other early career scientists. So the program impacts not just those who are participating in the program, but all the other early career members and scientists in the broader community. It's making a difference every day. I am a co-chair of the Communication and Outreach Subcommittee, um, and I am a graduate student at the University of Minnesota. I'm Lynn, a PhD candidate from the University of Lausanne in Switzerland, and one of the co-chair of the Community and Membership Engagement Subcommittee, and I joined the ECLP program this year. My name is Okolang Barakabalaji. I'm a Nigerian, um, a second year PhD candidate at the University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, in the communication and outreach subcommittee, and I am the co-chair. Hi, my name is Riley Kellermeyer, and I am working in the policy and advocacy subcommittee. Um, right now, I am a postdoctoral fellow at the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. I love Mishra, and I am a member of the career development subcommittee of the Early Career Leadership Program of uh, Genetic Society of America. And I applied last year in the fall, and then I started my uh, term beginning this year. And so far, my experience working with the GSA staff members and my committee members have been very fulfilling and rewarding. I'm Irina Yushenova. I'm a research scientist at Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts at the United States. And here at ECLP, I'm a member of uh, Community and Membership Engagement Committee. Uh, my name is David Petey. I'm a PhD candidate at Brown University and I am on the Multimedia Subcommittee. Hello everyone, I am Chandrika Kumar. I'm part of the ECLP Policy uh, and Advocacy Subcommittee. And um, I'm a grad student in uh, University of Delhi. My name is Lilo Samuel Kalani. 
Recently, I finished my PhD in animal genetics breeding and reproduction from South China Agricultural University. Presently, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at South China University, at South China Agricultural University in China. I'm a member of community and membership and engagement subcommittee. Because I believe that the GSA is a great platform to get to meet other geneticists around the world and learn, uh, and learn more about different scientific aspects from peers and mentors. I wanted to be part of something bigger than local associations, so it's quite exciting to get um, the opportunity to, uh, to contribute to events that have a greater outreach than usual when one is part of a smaller community. Program, I kind of had two goals in mind. The first one was that I was really interested in making new connections and kind of um, developing my network in science, um, sort of outside of my university and my specific graduate program. Um, and the Early Career Leadership Program provided a great opportunity to do that, to meet lots of different scientists at different stages in their career um, at lots of different organizations. Um, and so far since being in the program, I've gotten to make some of those great connections. Um, the second reason was sort of for my own personal growth and looking for an opportunity to step outside of what was offered in my university, um, sort of in connection with developing that broader network, being able to develop my own identity as a scientist, um, participate in new projects and initiatives um, that allow me to sort of both build those connections and network um, and as well as kind of grow into who I am as a scientist. I think I joined the early career leadership program because I felt that there was a lot of um, gaps in early career research and as a grad student. Um, things like mental health, things like diversity and inclusion, things like science policy and communication were not really um, being discussed or done in a way that I think I saw fit. And through this program, I wanted to really bring that change by first observing how people are um, actually doing it globally um, by connecting with a community which uh, believes in these um, aspects and uh, tries to bring about change by actually practicing um, science communication through a newsletter, through actually bringing up workshops, same with the policy programs that we have. We have a course coming up. So I think uh, that is, I wanted to bring the change that I wanted to actually see. So that is why I joined this program. This program gives you actually unique opportunity to create your own uh, project. It's an uh, amazing platform, not just network with a lot of people, but uh, really create something new. Like in our, uh, in big university, sometimes uh, you can, you know, you can be a part of a uh, postdoc uh, association, for example, and start some seminar series. Or uh, later in, at your career stage, you can uh, potentially organize conference but uh, especially for young people, for grad students, it's uh, not always possible, uh, especially in uh, small institutions. So here at ECLP, you can be as creative as you want. If you want to organize uh, career development um, workshops at some conference, you can do it. You want to, uh, anything you want, uh, if you want, um, organize seminar series dedicated to some particular organisms, it's also your freedom. You want to make um, some uh, YouTube uh, channel, YouTube video series uh, about what subject which really matter to you, that's your freedom. So when I heard about this unique program, I decided that I definitely want to be there, not to mention any other opportunities and just an amazing networking. Leadership is a skill that needs to be acquired through training and mentorship to be a successful scientist. Moreover, joining the Early Career Leadership Program organized by the Genetic Society of America, GSA, who have been made the opportunity to improve on qualities required to lead a team or group towards achieving set goals, and enables me to connect with result-oriented scientists from academics and or industries outside my present location, China. With this, I felt it's necessary to join this leadership program. The application process was quite easy because it was online and the essays were tailored towards knowing why applicants were interested to join the program. In addition, selected applicants were interviewed and questions such as who an applicant is 
while interested in joining ECFP of Genetic Society of America and future career goals were had for each applicant. Because I got the the application I request to a professor of mine in the department. He thought I should apply and at that point I never knew what the GSA or ECLP was like. So when he actually sent me that email, I checked it out and it was very fascinating because at first when the application process was super easy, to be honest, because it borders around your science, like what you're doing in your research. At the same time, it wants to know about your leadership, your leadership uh, roles that you've played in the past. If you've done any, just about it. it was a very, very easy application, to be honest. First, we have to apply by submitting a form. In this form, we had to justify why we want to be part of the ECLP program and a certain subcommittee. And we were also asked to write about our past experience with leadership in general. Then, if we are selected to the next round, we had a Zoom interview with uh, Jessica, so you. <laughs> the nice part about this is that we were also able to ask um, questions about the program. And as I got selected as a potential co-chair, I even had a second interview round with one of the current co-chair, it was Pauschal this time, of the subcommittee and Jessica. They asked me about my motivation of becoming a co-chair. I felt that applying for the program um, was a very accessible and supportive process. Um, the two parts of the application, first of all, the sort of online portion and submitting the application, uh, writing up some answers to questions that were provided uh, was a great actually conversation that was sparked with my PI sort of about what my goals were for joining the program. Um, and then the interview portion of the application, um, I felt was very conversational. Um, the, those that I interviewed with were really genuinely, genuinely interested in me and what my goals were in terms of joining the program as well as sort of my career as a whole. Um, I really felt that um, the, the staff was trying to get to know me um, and how the program could support me um, in some of those goals. Um, so overall, I could really tell during my application process that um, the application and the program as a whole was very supportive, but also was very um, prestigious and was doing some really great work. I volunteered for a number of projects this year. Uh, for example, volunteering, I volunteered to welcome the participants in this uh, fly meeting uh, and introducing them to the early career leadership program, both in person as well as online. In addition, I have also uh, participated in the GSA's Awards Audit Focus Group as an early career scientist representative. However, if I have to pick one, I would say that my favorite project so far has been organizing the Career Exploration Panel Workshop during the FLY meeting 2022. So there we invited a number of the software researchers actually are leading a non-academic career, industry uh, research career to discuss the options available in the industry for the researchers or the grad students or postdocs working with the model organisms such as flies. And the discussion has been informed actually uh, many early career scientists, the potential of these genetics based uh, academic research and the training in addressing some of the pressing issues that are currently the focus of the major industry. So our participants there were mostly grad students, about 70% of them and also about 20% of them are postdocs. So it was well received and we attended, uh, we had seen very positive feedbacks after the workshop. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to cater to the need of the early career scientists in, in that project. So that's been my favorite project so far. It was the podcast episode that I actually got to produce. Um, it was really, really fun to um, be able to take lead on a project um, so early on and to be able to see all the steps uh, that goes into making a successful podcast. And, you know, uh, when you listen to podcasts, people really make it seem easy, but I quickly learned that, it, you know, it's not as easy as just hitting record and then publish. Oh, my favorite project. That's an interesting one to be honest, because uh, I've worked on a few, but my favorite will still be the, the weekly project that I do, that is working on the ECLP newsletter that comes out every week. The newsletter that we work on is actually, like I said earlier, it's a weekly thing for us in which it entails different parts. We have the science writing part in which we have different people on weekly basis that contributes to that. 
they write about uh, different things from science to society from child education to anything you think about that can actually not just impact our science world but can actually impact us as a person the newsletter actually comprises of that and also we have the job aspect in which we we search for job uh, vacancies for people and we post the link on the newsletter and also we have a section that is dedicated to the, to building uh, skills of sciences because we one thing about science is we have to continue learning every day you know the world is moving at a very fast pace and we have to keep up so you have to keep on just updating your knowledge and updating your library so what we do is we look for we search for skills uh build up programs in which you can actually include in the newsletter and we send it out and also we have different kind of things we have articles from gene to genome spotlight also when it's based availability for the spotlight so these are the things we actually collate together and send out every friday to registered members of the ECLP and the GSC at large In my subcommittee, I happen to be the co-chair. Uh, not totally planned for. That is the most surprising thing that actually threw me off because I just joined the co- I just joined the committee. I was expecting, you know, just ease into things and just get to, you know, know what's happening and, and the likes. But I was invited to be the co-chair and. It was surprising to me, and before you know it, I had a lot of responsibility, which I was glad to take. And I met, I have a great support, and with the, their help, I was able to actually have been doing well so far. That's been that's been the most surprising thing. Exciting thing is actually the wealth of knowledge and diversity that actually comes with being in ECLP, because I have I got to talk with a lot of people that. On a normal day without the ECLP, I may not have a direct contact or direct link to them at the moment. Get to share ideas, get to hear scientists talk about science writing, talk about projects and the, and the like. So it's been a wonderful experience so far. Yeah. One of the most recent experiences was uh, we some of us from the program took part in uh, the PEQG 22 conference and we moderated one of the sessions for them. And um, I think during the session. It was so seamless when everyone was so inclusive of the other person. We were uh, we were to decide which portions we had to speak out, and everyone was so accommodating across time zones, despite all of us being from different time zones, different universities, different countries. And uh, when we shared our stories, I felt a sense of belongingness, which I think um, you sometimes tend to miss between all of the imposter syndrome that you come through while you're doing your grad research. So I think that was. The feeling of belongingness, which I came across, I think it was very exciting, new, and very uh, homely at the same time. Yeah. Um, being able to just get familiar and um, get used to working with the podcast medium, it's been a really, really flexible and a really, really strong form of multimedia for uh, numerous fields outside of academia. And I was really just excited to uh, bring this podcasting medium to the GSA and help develop my own skills as well as um, just to be a better science communicator. And every second of it's been exciting because it's all been new, um, but we've been able to work as a team to uh, figure it out. So the ECLP has really helped me explore other career options, both within and outside of the academy. Um, including ways that you can get involved in your community and relate that to the science that you do. Just the interpersonal skills and being able to work collaborative. Um, coming from undergrad, uh, I had never really had the experience to work collaborative on a, on a very large scale with people from different institutions. And I think having the skills to, um, to be able to coordinate as well as just be able to keep up time management between everybody um, is going to be really invaluable, invaluable for my career moving forward. Free um, yearly training courses offered to ECLP members, um, including like a, sci- a course on scientific writing, which has been very helpful for both 
science writing and writing for the general community, like general public. They also um, offer courses in like self-care um, and leadership, especially to co-chairs and second year members, as well as the science policy and advocacy committee, subcommittee have helped um, bring in a science policy workshop from the FASEB. Um, and all these have been available at approximately every year and are free to all ECLP representatives. I have realized a number of leadership skills uh, during my time so far at ECLP. Uh, to name a few, I would say organizational skills and uh, team building, team playing and public speaking and engagement. And most importantly, uh, networking actually. So I was able to network and build a relationship with the scientists from leading industries and engage with them in discussing how these industries can integrate, come forward and integrate the basic science and research uh, by partnering with the universities and academic institutions. And in addition, actually, I'm also looking forward to the science policy workshop. That is um, um, a series of the workshop that is for the ECLP representatives by Federation of the American Societies for Experimental Biology, where I was accepted lately. So my inclination towards the science policy is not new. As a grad student in India and as a member of the Indian Society of Cell Biology, I actually advocated uh, formulating strategies and policies to integrate the cell biology and genetics-based research uh, for the undergraduate teaching and training, uh, especially in the colleges in the rural India where they did not have the state-of-the-art infrastructure and facilities. So in this science policy workshop, I intend to gain substantial knowledge of how the science actually on the other side of the bench works and uh, learn about budgeting appropriations and policies. And eventually my plan is in collaboration with the a policy and advocacy subcommittee within the ECLP is to invite the stakeholders from uh, all academic institutions, funding bodies, uh, industry partners, and also the government regulatory bodies to come forward to a, a platform and engage in discussion on formulating uh, these customized strategies tailored to the need of the early career scientists, grad students and postdocs uh, especially. So these have been some of the leadership skills that I've been able to hone on to and I'm still working on those. Program, I've already seen myself grow in a number of different ways. A couple that come to mind um, was being able to sort of right when I joined the program, step into the role of a co-chair, um, sort of going out into, into a position that was uncomfortable to me as I was still getting to know the program and learning the ropes, um, but sort of being willing to step up and serve, even though that felt a little bit uncomfortable at the beginning, um, has really pushed me to grow in some of those leadership skills. One of the skills that I've noticed come out of that um, was really my reliance on sort of the team and our subcommittee, um, as well as the GSA staff as a whole, and the resources that are available, and starting to learn um, and grow in how to refer and support others within my subcommittee to those team members or resources um, as needed. And part of that sort of growth in um, developing the team or relying on those different resources as a leader has been the relational aspect of things. So getting to know my um, other co-chair, getting to know his personality and the personalities of some of the other staff members um, to understand how I can work better with them um, and sort of help the whole subcommittee be able to utilize all of those resources as we move our projects and work forward. I think my entire experience in terms of leadership skill can be summed uh, by one phrase, which is lead by example. I think um, of all the things that uh, I talked about uh, previously, that uh, we need science communication to be better, we need uh, science policy so that we know how uh, the science that we are currently trying to practice comes about, or even get uh, diversity and inclusion and so many other things. Uh, when we're discussing that, I think the main thing is for us to first reach out to people and bring about that change and wait around. So, I think ECLP taught me that very essential leadership skill that if you want to see the change, you have to take the initiative. You have to start the discussion. If you want people to discuss mental health in graduate research, in early career research, you have to start the discussion. So I think um, that's the most valuable leadership skill that I think I learned from the program. me the opportunity to explore different career paths. I'm very interested in science policy. And as such, I've had the opportunity to interview people from all sorts of science policy backgrounds, including people like making laws, doing litigation, advocacy, everything in between um, that I don't think I'd have the opportunity to do without the ACLP. Yeah, 
huge uh, this genetic society all members of it you can uh, network uh, within uh, ECLP first of all because uh, we have people from all around the world and it's uh, truly amazing like all around the globe com the globe completely uh, different institutions uh, different perspective uh, different lifestyle and not to mention uh, research areas and you can talk to all of them you can also especially at our uh, committee since we organize some event on uh, gsa conferences you got access to uh, specialists from uh, all those uh, areas it, it can be drosophila it can be fungi it can be yeast can be populational genetics and uh, you have uh, that dedicated time to talk to all of them not to mention that if you organize uh, some events you can actually um, contact them directly so i highly recommend this program to everyone who want uh, who want something new who want to be creative who want to talk to people across the world and not to be awkward about reaching up to big professor while you still young uh, grad students really try it worth it so we also have um, amazing uh, peer review uh, program so you're gonna learn how to be great peer reviewer and everything please visit our website it's truly amazing and i'm looking forward to work with you in future considering where i have presently i'm in china asia since i joined the early career leadership program as a member of community and membership and grievance of community have been able to connect with young researchers who are passionate about science. Recently, Genes to Genomes, a blog from the Genetic Society of America, featured my spotlight as an early career researcher. And through this year opportunity, I have received a series of messages from scholars across the globe, thereby increasing my visibility in the world as a young, passionate researcher. With this, I believe my network strength has increased since I joined ECFP. Uh, I would say the networking opportunities as a member of the ECFP are huge and enormous. For example, in my own research, uh, I used the Sahila of flies through flies as a model system to study a bunch of cell behaviors. So we found a potential uh, clinical application of our study enhancing enhancing the uh, current or existing the cancer immunotherapy. So we partnered with uh, an industry uh, to develop these treatments and technologies further, and they were able to successfully raise funding and start a subsidiary startup on our work. So during the organization of the career exploration panel workshop, where we invited researchers from industry, I was able to network with the industry leaders who have successfully used uh, these model organisms-based uh, research, and they were able to successfully also translate these skills, their skills, uh, from bench to bedside. So. I was able to network with them and I'm glad that uh, that was an opportunity for me. Uh, in addition, I'm also actually organizing another workshop, which is our Career Dev Subcommittee's uh, flagship workshop, a workshop Wednesday series. So in this series, uh, the theme for this uh, workshop is the scientists with multiple careers, uh, how to handle um, another career outside the lab. So where we invite a scientist from both academia and industry who are leading scientists in their field, but they also have an exemplary career outside the lab. So I was able to network and build relationship with both uh, those wide variety of scientists uh, who have such inclinations. So in addition, our committee's flagship program, which is a decoding life in the new cities, also provides uh, ample networking opportunities if you are willing to uh, do it. Hi, my name is Jessica Velez, and I am the membership, engagement, and early career programs manager for the Genetic Society of America. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts and experiences with the ECLP. If any of our applicants have questions for the ECLP representatives who joined us today, or me, please send an email to engagement at genetics-gsa.org. That's the word engagement fully spelled out at genetics fully spelled out dash gsa.org. Good luck on your application.